Hello everyone, and welcome to this Active HDL video. My name is Chantel, and for this video, I'll be showing how to use the Code to Graphics Converter. It's useful for design documentation purposes and for visualization of the design modules and interfaces, which makes for more readability and a better debugging process. This converter essentially turns HDL code into a visual format depending on the code, so these can turn into either block diagrams or state diagrams. For this video, I'll be using the sample design BJAC, which you can find in Open Example under VHDL Designs. When this design is accessed, there is normally an FSM file for the control, but I've already switched it over to HDL code to demonstrate the code to graphics converter. So when you want to use code to graphics, you can use the command line code to graphics, followed by arguments to produce the converted file, or use the code to graphics conversion wizard located inside of the tools menu. For this video, I'll be using the wizard. I'm going to convert the BJAC C1 file first. This file will be converted into an FSM. And a cool thing about code to graphics is that the file being converted doesn't have to be loaded or active within the current design. So you can convert a source file from another design and add it to your current design if you wanted to. The converter doesn't support asynchronous machines though, so there has to be a clock specified within the source. Uh, this clock needs to be an input signal of a scalar standard type. And you could see in this example that the clock is a standard logic type, so it meets this condition. Clock events are recognized by statements of rising and falling edges or changes to the clock. In this example, the clock events are described using the clock event and the clock signal assignment. The converter can also recognize set and reset inputs as well, as long as they are scalar standard types too. For states, they have to be defined with a state variable inside of a process. For this example, we can see that the states are enumerated with a one-hot encoding, and you can see all the states are defined inside of this process, and it's using a case statement. Conditions for transitions are also inside this case, and transitions are defined by a state variable assignment like this. Input and output signals are determined by their port type, like how next C is an output signal port for this FSM. The converter can also recognize the FSM with even two or three processes. In BJAC C2, notice how this is a two pattern process. It has one for next state logic, and the other for current state logic. Now that I've gone over how the converter reads the source code, I'm going to use the wizard now to convert BJAC C1 into a state diagram. In the wizard, you'll want to specify what you want to do with the generated file. I'll leave it at the default choice. Then you'll want to choose where the new converted file will be stored. And then you'll want to choose the source files you want to convert. Before finalizing, Go to Settings and go to the FSM Settings tab. You can choose to generate an FSM with Default or with Create, which will then create a log if the conversion is unsuccessful. Or Omit, where the converter will not attempt to create an FSM and will only generate block diagrams. Then you can enable Hierarchy if you want a hierarchical state diagram. And checking that box will allow you to decide on the number of states per page, as well as keeping the hierarchical states only on the main page. Also, if you're using VHDL, you can edit the settings for how the converter will read the logic for voltage and ground sources. Once the settings are good, click OK and click Finish. You can see in the console window that the conversion is successful, and you can even click on the log to see the process it went through. Now you have a visual state diagram for the source code. Since we've now finished our FSM, I'll detach BJAC C1 and C2 from the design. And now I'm going to create a block diagram. I'll be using BJAC to generate the top level diagram of this design. For block diagram conversion, all component or module instantiations are translated to symbols. All signals are translated to wires or buses. 
and the remaining statements, like processes or signal assignments, are translated to extra code blocks. For example, inside of display units, the entities bin to BCD and BCD to LED would be translated into signal assignment blocks. Now I'll go back to the wizard, add the file to the current design, designate the save location, and then add BJAC into our list of files to be converted. When translating components or modules into symbols, the converter searches the available libraries for design units with the same name. If you have extra libraries you want to use for conversion, click on Libraries and select the libraries you want to use. Before converting, I'll go back to the Settings dialog box for my block diagram. In the BDE Page Setup tab, this just sets physical properties of the BDE page itself. And in the first BDE tab, you can specify having multiple block diagram pages, as well as the max number of objects in a page. You can also choose to show the instance or symbol names of components, and as well as specific nets. If there are certain items you want to hide, click on this box to select items to hide after conversion. Now that I've finished finalizing these settings, I can now convert. Finally, after successful conversion, you could see that the end result is a BDE file that contains a top-level visual representation of all components described from the BHDL source file. When you click on a symbol, it will take you directly to the source of its implementation. And now you have a basic understanding of how to use the Code to Graphics Converter. This concludes this video, and thank you all for watching.